to be here with you guys for our episode number 86 of Window Treatment Friday Live. Um, thank you for joining us. We are going to be with you in just a second. It takes a little bit to accept everybody's request and go live here. Okay, so Kim sent request, I accept her. So for anyone who is new here, this is the time, the day, and about the time that Kim and I go live for this broadcast that we call Window Treatment Friday Live, where both of us geek out on all things window treatments. Yeah. So Kim is here. Hello, hello, friend. Hello, hello, everybody. We are also live on Facebook. Sorry for the, the bit of a delay today. Normally we are live at nine, but I was stuck in a lot of traffic. If you are in the New Jersey area, or at least in the Northeast area, Morris County, specifically Essex County, we are getting some frozen rain. So I woke up to about an inch of ice on my driveway. So that was really fun. So yeah, so the traffic this morning was a little killer. Hi, there you okay. are. It looks like I'm, yay, I'm here. All right, awesome. Okay, we're everywhere. I have like four devices happening here. So I think we're live everywhere. So you guys, welcome. For those again who are new, thank you for sticking with us while we uh, both Kim and I join and we have our presentation up here where we usually show you the different pictures and the visuals of what we're talking about. And today is a much requested topic and it's going to be all about ripple folds or as much as we can fit in about half an hour. So Kim, friend, take it away. This hold, is your project. Hold on once Vita, is there a way to lower the volume on one of your phones or devices because we are getting a little bit of an echo i am completely on mute mm. everywhere all right all right so we're just gonna um, roll with it yeah oh wait wait hold on it looked like I, I could lower it even more even though i did it before but here we are um you guys those are on with us could you please let, let us know if if um you're hearing any echo okay all right the tech support is trying to help Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Vitaly. Okay. So this project that we have here is a ripple fold drape on a French return rod. Now, this is the first time we ever really did a ripple fold drape on a French return rod. So we were very excited to do it. This was done for Jetty Madden Designs for a project out in the Hamptons. And uh, this was a 100% fullness baton draw. Uh, room darkening lining um, that we did on a Helzer Brothers French return rod um, with the ripple fold. So typically with the French return, you would do a rod with rings. Now with Helzer Brothers, you do have the capability that they have now have a traversing French return rod, which is really exciting. And someone who That is loves really cool. Yes. I, no, I didn't know it existed. So Helzer Brothers mm -hmm. has a French return traverse rod. Correct. So That's if you really cool. love the look of a French return and you, but you need, you want to do a ripple fold, you know, a couple years ago, I'd have to tell you, so sorry, I can't do that, but now I can do it. So it's really exciting that we have these capabilities. So this, again, you could either do it um, with ripple folds. You could operate them, whether it's a uh, decorative rod or a track and they are operated uh, three ways, baton draw, cord draw, or motorized. Hmm. Nice, and you know what? I'm realizing that as we're lunging into your project there, I think it was a good idea to show what it looks like, but um, let's just show our folks how, like what a ripple fold even is, like what is the makeup of a ripple right. fold. So let me take a little bit of a stab to it and uh, you can you can fill in what I'm saying and you guys feel free to ask us live questions, questions here too. Yeah, now ripple folds are very popular drapes right now, at least in the Northeast where Kim and I are. I'm pretty sure they're popular in any metropolitan area and uh, also uh, on the, the coast, on the West Coast as well. The reason they're so popular is because the topper is very clean. There are no pinches, there are no prongs, there's no triple, double, quadruple, there's no frou-frou happening at the top of the drape. It is just very streamlined look. The reason that it is a streamlined look is because of the way that it's made. So let me explain a little bit about how it's made. The picture that you're seeing here 
well, it has three pictures. The very top one is the back of the drape. And essentially what happens, the drape is not split into pleats. The pleats, the pleats are not sewn together. They're not pinched anywhere. It's a flat piece of fabric, essentially. So that's how the drape is made as a flat piece of fabric. Oh, the reason that they it, can hear you on Instagram. Sorry, Vita. And here a lady in Pink the gray, gray sweater. sweater. Hmm. Pink gray sweater. Okay. That's great. Okay. Oh. How about now? Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear well you can hear me through Facebook, right? So that's how you're hearing me. I'm hearing can you through guys, my headphones, yeah. Yeah. Can you guys let me know if you can hear me? I'm s I can I can hear you through my phone as well. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just have so your the phone. Yeah. Okay. So should I go okay, on? Okay, they're saying yes. They're saying yes. Okay, so go oh, on. Thank you, guys. Okay. Should I repeat everything that I just said? <laughs> <laughs> just start with that it's it's flat. Let's go from that, the back of the, um, the back. Yeah, okay. Of, like we're looking so, at the top picture. Yeah, let's start with the top picture. So the major difference between pleated drapes and ripple mm -hmm. fold drapes mm -hmm. is how they're fabricated. And the major difference in the fabrication is that instead of dividing the fabric into parts to make pleats, instead of pinching the pleats at the top or the bottom, wherever they're, they're pinched, the ripple fold drape is made completely flat. So it's a flat piece of fabric. The second element that makes it into ripple fold is the ripple fold tape that is attached to the back of the fabric. It is those two pictures. The second picture is just a ripple fold tape that is kind of rolled up into mm -hmm. a ball. And the third picture is how ripple fold actually comes in from the vendor. There also, if you guys can see the differences in the picture, the second one is a, um, is a solid twill tape. And the third, the second, the second, um, the, the last picture, so all the way to the right, is um, clear. So hopefully it, it comes through. Hang on just one second. <laughs> Somehow my, my, my chair with props got moved over. Okay, so this is the tape. This is the ripple fold tape that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So it is just a flat twill tape like this. And what it has, it has these snaps right here. So, so this, this is what the snap looks like, okay? So that's the picture that you're seeing there, and that's that's what I'm showing you here. This this gets attached, so it comes, it, it's, it's a big tape, it can come like this, <laughs> or it's nicely rolled onto um, the spool. The tape gets attached to the back of the drape. I actually have, we, we are doing a ton of ripple fold drapes right now, so I just grabbed one from our sewing table, <laughs> and, um, and I wanted to show you what it looks like. So, so here's the back of the drape. Um, this is the lining. This is the side hem. This is the buckram. So the buckram is still there. And actually, Kim, we are going to do an episode on like the anatomy of a of, of a drape, which would be really cool. wonderful. So, <laughs> so we're going to go back to that. So don't worry about like the hem and the buckram right now. I'm just showing you the back of the drape. But what I want you to see is. This is how the twill tape is attached. It just simply gets sewn onto the top of the drape. Okay. So, so this is how the drape is made. That's one of the um, aspects, elements. the elements of the ripple fold um, look. The second element of the ripple fold look is the type of hardware that it mm -hmm. uses. And so this is, these are the two pictures that I have for you guys here. The track on the upper left hand side corner is like any any track that you've seen. It's it's extruded aluminum on, on the top. It's, it comes in different, slightly different sizes in terms of the height and the depth and the width. But essentially it is your basic Kirsch traverse rod that is at the basis of all ripple fold tracks. But it is the carriers that makes it makes it slightly different mm -hmm. because what happens is this tape, the snaps that you're seeing in the tape actually snap, they connect. So this is the male snap. There's a female snap in, in the rod and it gets connected. And we, when it snaps into each other, when it gets connected, the tape can create this S curve look. 
or ripple fault look just like this. So this is what it looks like from the top. And this is the second picture that you're seeing. So this essentially is how the ripple fault looks the way it looks. It is a flat piece of fabric. The tape gets connected to the back of it with the male part of the snap. Then there is a rod with the female part of the snap. And then the together they create this S curve look or in our industry, we'll call it the ripple fault look. And that's what ultimately gives the drape a very streamlined, the non frou frou <laughs> uh, kind of kind of look that is really super popular right now. So and if, guys, let me know if you have any uh, anything that I can clarify. Sometimes Kim and I talk about how these things are so innate to us. It is hard for us to even explain it in a way that is understandable. So if, if you guys have any questions, if anything that I said is not completely clear, if you have anything clarifying you want to know, please let us know. And also in Europe, they refer to the ripple folds as the uh, wave. That's their. That's what they call the pleat over there. Okay. I, I have. That's right. Um, we knew that. Yeah, I have family members who live in Portugal, and they had custom drapes made. And um, my cousin said, "Oh, I did the wave pleat," and I just kind of was like, "Okay." Like, and then, and then when I went there and saw it in person, I'm like, "Oh, it's a ripple fold." And then coincidentally, um, a couple months later, I was working with a designer who was ordering a rod from the UK, and they kept referring their ripple fold and their traversing system as the wave. So I had to learn uh -huh. that language and because the connection is a little different. The end result oh, is, is the it? same. Yeah, it's so it, it has a hook. Is it's, it is a little different. So what is our favorite fullness? Okay, we're actually we're, we're going get to get there. to that. Okay, <laughs> we're going to have a slide um, showing you the different fullnesses. Well, There's four different fullnesses and what they look like. So Excellent question, but hold that thought. We're going to get to it. <laughs> but to, to um, react to what you're saying, Kim, I, I actually, Ripple Fold is, I mean, it makes sense the way what, what once it's said and once you see what mm -hmm. it is. But for some reason, it's hard for my brain to remember the word. And every time, I'm like, you know, you know, the thing, the thing, the, the thing. And I keep calling it the S curve. That That's what, that's how my brain remembers it. So the wave is actually, <laughs> and for me, much easier way to remember it than the ripple fold. So you guys, you can use it, the S curve, the ripple fold or the wave. And, and you, as long as the other person understands and you're talking the same language, you will be on the same page. Yeah. Exactly. All right, moving on. Okay, so this is a project that we did here at Vitalia Inc. This was for a designer, design firm. Um, uh, Michelle Plactor Design it was a recent project. It's really cool. Let me show you just here, just to, just to oh, yes. do a little tangent from, from the Ripple Fold themselves just to show you the fabric. I mean, how cool and amazing is this fabric, right? So it's sheer with these like medallions and the medallions are not fully attached to the fabric. So they're kind of attached in the center and the rest of them are kind of flappy like that. Yeah. So very difficult to deal with, very difficult to handle at the machine, but really cool looking. Well, and let's uh, and, and let's just talk to that really quickly because if uh, Michelle didn't have an idea as to what pleat she wanted to do and showed you the fabric, because oftentimes that happens where I run into designers or clients that say, "I'm not really sure what pleat I want to do," and then I take a look at the fabric and something like this, I would have said, "Let's." automatically do a ripple fold so you could really mm -hmm. appreciate the the discs on that because as soon as you try to sew them into any kind of a pleat mm -hmm. I, it just there it's not going to look right and it's not going to lay especially right especially not this fabric yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, so this is what it looks like in, in a full curtain. And Michelle usually tends to go much more contemporary and streamlined and very updated. So I think ripple fold is like her natural way to go. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, and that's what the drape looks like. That's what ripple fold um, looks like to you guys a little bit close up. Okay. You know what, let me go to here. We'll, we'll yeah. do fullness now. If yeah. I had it as the last slide, but let's just jump to it right now. So hopefully you can see it. Do, do you want to take it, Kim? Uh, so oh. with the fullness, there are four different types of fullness. There are 60, 80, 100, and 120. So um, it's hard to see, Vita. So if you want to say- Yeah, the, the, the very first one, the very first 60, one is 60, 60, 80, 100, 100 and 120. And now to answer the question before, my favorite, I like to live in the world between 80 and 100. Um, 60 is a little too flat for me and 120 is a little too full for me personally. 
I'm going to be doing uh, ripple full drapes in my dining room out of 38 East fabric. And I chose to go with 100 because I wanted it to be full, but not super full and over the top because my table is close to my window. <laughs> right. So you didn't want the fabric to encroach protrude, into the yeah. room and protrude so much into yeah. the room. Yeah. So I'm with Kim on this. We're, we usually live in the world of um, somewhere at 80 or 100. So you can't you can't go in between. You can't be like, oh, give me 85. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's just, you, you have those four very, um, options and that's it. And the, so, OK, so I guess one would ask, well, what is the criteria for choosing 80 versus 100? Sometimes it is complete personal preference. So a designer, we would send, by the way, I have to say, I don't know who did these pictures. I've yes. found them on the internet. Kim has found the same pictures as well. If you if you type in, if you Google Ripple Fold Fullness, these pictures come up. Whoever created them, I thank you greatly. <laughs> but they're, I, I've never been able to find a source for them. They're, they're on someone, I found them on someone's blog years ago. And this is honestly what I do when I show Mm -hmm. um, clients, like this is a different type of fullness. Yep, but yep, yep. So if you guys are workroom listening to us, grab this slide or just type in fullness for ripple fold drapes and these it pictures will up. most likely come up. So when, when you're working with your clients, either end consumers or your designers, you can show this to them and it's the designer or the client can make a recommend, uh, not recommend, can make a decision mm -hmm. as to which fullness they prefer better. You as a professional, you need to tell them that uh, the fuller the drape is, the more fabric it uses, the more labor it uses. So it's going to be a little bit more expensive than the 80% mm -hmm. fullness. So, so personal preference and the design aesthetic is one of your criteria. And then the second criteria is if you are, if you have a certain budget, if you're trying to work within a certain economics for the fabric and the labor, 60% is the most economical, then 80, then 100, then 120. It just uses that much more labor, that much more fabric, that much more tape, that, that much more rod, you know, all of that. So if you're working within a budget, go for lower fullness. If you, um, if you, if budget is not in a, a, an issue or question, then go for the aesthetic that you prefer. Now, now I have a question for you. Have you ever really done 60? I don't think I've ever done 60. We have. We have. I, I don't think I've, I've always kind of swayed people away because the difference between the budget between 60 and 80 is so minimal that mm -hmm. I personally think that 60 is just a little too flat. Yeah. And and that's totally cool. Yeah. Me personally, I actually like it. Oh, so okay. you, see, you see how you guys like, I mean, we, we, we didn't, we didn't compare notes. No, we didn't know no, what each other was going to say. It's because, and that is to just show you the point that is a mm -hmm. total and complete personal preference. It's so subjective. It's very subjective. So I have drapes in my own um, home, in my family room that are 100% fullness. I think they're way too full, way too full. The when, when, when it starts like curving in and out, I like it a lot more when the curves are really deep, the deeper, the better. Um, that's why I will just to jump us over to the pleated drapes for a single width drape. I always do four pleats instead of five pleats because I like there to be larger distances. See, this is where it came yeah. out. I disagree this as well. And that's totally and that's cool. So cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my personal preference is when, when there is a lot of room between where the drape is essentially attached to the rod, be that the pleat or be that the snap. So I like it when the fold is nice and deep. When it's not that deep, when it's very shallow, then I find that the fabric, it looks very, very nice at the top, but by the time it comes down to the bottom, middle of the drape, bottom of the drape, it tends to flare out and it does not keep its shape anymore the way it is done at the top. So for that reason, I, I prefer the 60%. So do you want to um, talk through the differences in terms of like what the difference actually is between 60, 80 and like the spacing and from back to front, like you were just saying? Yeah, let's see. Do we have a slide on that? We don't. Actually, I did. You know, Stephanie put it in and I took it out. I thought it would be too um, complicated. <laughs> but let's go there. Yeah. Oh. So... Oh, Luann's mm -hmm. joined us. Hey, Lou. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> hey, Luann. Okay. So the the difference between 60, 80, 100, and 120 has to do with the track itself. It is not so much with the tape. The tape, so here's something interesting. Kim, do you know for years I thought that the tape only came in, in the spacing and that's it? Oh, and really? do you know that the tape actually comes with different spacing? Yeah. 
I know. So uh, oh, I she just popped up on my phone. Yeah. Um, so so there's there's two ways of controlling your fullness, but let's just for the argument's sake, say that uh, we'll hold one variable constant. Mm -hmm. So we'll say that the tape only comes with this spacing. And this is, let's see, oh, Gina is here too. This is about three inches or so between these snaps where the fullness it comes into play and where it can be um, changed is in the spacing between the carriers yeah. on the rod. So the larger the space between the carriers, the more of the fullness, the more of the um, depth you have the between between each snap. Okay. So even though the snaps are the same, but because they are um, attached to the carriers that are further apart, this this depth becomes um, deeper. I should so mm -hmm. this distance becomes deeper. So that's how we usually mitigate or control the fullness of our drapes. Not so much with the tape, even though you have to. If you really wanted it super, super yeah. uh, deep, that you can do it both. You can do it with the rod and you can do it with the tape. And if any of it is really confusing, because I can s suspect that it probably is, because this is something that you have to feel and touch and see, then for your purposes, you guys just know if you're a designer or a window treatment specialist, just know that you can control your fullness by the type of track, not the type, but by the way you order your track. So when you order your hardware, you have to specify what percent fullness you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And that dictates how far the carriers are on the rod. So yeah. the smaller the fullness, the further out the carriers. That's really all you guys need to know. And also keep in mind that certain decorative rods only come in certain fullnesses. So I know that if you're ordering hardware from Jab, they only offer 100% fullness. Learn that the hard way. That's so, interesting. Tell yeah. me more about that. I've always been able to control our fullness with the so rod. I, it's just something that depending on the vendor that they only offered 100% fullness and the designer wanted 80%. Now, Billy, billing, being Billy and me being myself, I asked, uh, I had Jab send me a piece of the track um, big enough so that we could sit there and play around. And, and so we ordered um, the track, but then put our own Kirsch guts in it. So, yeah, right. So, so really, I think what that tells me is that that company, mm -hmm. Jab, um, they only have the guts, which is essentially the string mm -hmm. with carriers. Um, actually, it's a, it's a train, ask really. Lisa, yeah, yeah <laughs> to bring it in for me if you, she can hear me. Can you bring in the um, the guts of the track? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you guys can see, and actually, any track can be. You can take out those guts and you can put in your new, <laughs> your own ones. Yeah. Now the the tricky part was finding the specific one because there are different carriers. Believe it or not, there are Hi, different Lisa. types of um, carriers that in trucks. So. We uh, purchased a couple and we had a couple here and we tested it to see which ones um, would fit best. Um, this pool of the carriers. <laughs> okay, we're going to see. It. Lisa will bring it over and we can see. Vanna. You'll be Vanna. Okay, okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, so, so this is how these, um, these carriers come. Yep. So this is a spool that we have. Um, and this particular one comes with a little baggie. And so you can order any rod or any track. And let's say it doesn't come with the fullness that you want. You can actually add your own. Now, we know that different rods actually have different tracks. So you have to be careful. Yeah. Because and we also learned it the hard way. We ordered this thinking that it's going to be universal for any track. And you know what? There's no label on it. There's, the label is probably on the box. But what we've learned is that the H rail from Aria ha uses different carriers than mm -hmm. Kirsch. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it would be very interesting to know whether like those decorative companies that purchase these carriers from like a wholesale supplier, whether they purchase Kirsch or someone else's. My my guess would be that it would be Kirsch. Yeah. So that's, I, f I think... There was two different styles that we ended up using that we were able to get it to fit and to work. Um, luckily that they were more stationary panels and they weren't actual full operable. So we didn't have to worry about trying to fit a lead carrier in there. 
Um, but even if we had to, we could have used their lead carrier and then Billy would have, you know, worked his magician magic and made it work with the, the, uh, train or trucks or whatever you want to call it in terms of. The yeah. Carriers. Yeah. We'll call them, we would call them little wagons. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what goes inside yeah. the truck. And, uh, let's see if maybe I can, I can demonstrate. So we have, we have the back of this panel, which I showed to you earlier, and you see how we have these little, um, these are called pendants. So the pendants get attached to the snap. And then, let's see if this will work. And then this carrier right here. So this part up at the top, it, it is the inside the track. It goes inside the track. And this part right here on the bottom, it gets attached to the uh, pendant. Let's see if I can maybe. Oh, there you go. Got you it. See how it's yeah. So, so there it is. It's it's now now <laughs> it's hanging. <laughs> and then we can take this one and do the same thing. Now this one, th this looks very very full. Do you see the distance between the mm -hmm. carriers are super small? So it makes me feel like this is a hundred and twenty fullness. Yeah. It's a lot of snaps um, that you have to because it's a two-step process. A snaps. So and, and, and these snaps are awful. They 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 hurt hard. your fingers so bad. They're so hard. Ah, it's really hard to get. So them what in. you're seeing Vita do here, what she already has on the drape is she already has one of the connection pieces on there. A lot of times what happens is you don't get those, you get those pieces with all the hardware. So it's a process of snapping those on and then snapping it to the actual carrier that connects to the rod so um that's where so this is it yeah. so see how i'm just holding it by the string and now the drape is connected to these carriers mm -hmm. and imagine these carriers being inside the rod and what happens is this part right here will go towards the back like or towards the front like this if i move it over mm -hmm. like that. So, so there it is Okay. There you have it. And so <laughs> Hopefully, you guys let us know of any questions. I'm, I'm thinking this is pretty confusing. We're like okay. trying to make it work. Um, so, you know, on a little screen with little pictures. <laughs> um, but but it, it, at least it gives you an idea, right? Yes. It, it's sort of a little bit of an understanding of how the ripple fold drapes are made, what makes them what they are, what the different fullnesses are. So you may not understand exactly all the little nuances and all the little particulars, but at least you have an idea of the terminology and what to look for and what to ask your workroom. Now, and then this particular picture here, uh, this is um, a project that we did for Ellie Moreau's designs um, for one of her clients. And these uh, ripple fold, these were um, not instead of it being a pair, it was one with panels and these were done at 80 percent. And we went back and forth. Um, and the fullness um, conversation had to come into play because you can see here on either side of the fireplace, um, there are doors and there are doors that um, open out but we wanted it so that the drape could clear. So originally um, she had thought she wanted a hundred, but by the time we did the math and figured it out, the stack with the hundred would um, be too close and cover the handle. So we opted for the 80% and then um, the panels on either side of the fireplace stacked in, which is a little different. Typically they stack away from the mm -hmm. fireplace but because yeah. of the position of the doors. We just thought, you know what, let's try it. And we had it stack in and then the, windows on the side those stack um on either side on the outer side of the window such a pretty room yes everywhere. all right i think there's one other thing that we wanted to yes. discuss and Lead this is carriers. the overlap yeah yep. mm -hmm. okay so the there's two different types of uh overlaps that you can select with a ripple full drape you have the butt master and then um it's just then it's just a, the single the regular overlap so what the but what it means with the butt master is is that the um ripple fold since it is like an s instead of it being like a typical drape where you have you know your your lead your overlaps that overlap like this they meet in the middle and they continue that S curve. Now that um, continues the shape. We often opt for butt master when we, we are do, when we do stationary applications, 
light filtering applications, the only time we ever go for an overlap where it kind of interrupts that curve of the of you know the the curve of the ripple fold or the undulation of the ripple fold is when we're doing a, a ripple fold in a room darkening situation. So that actually this the is, first picture was that. So let yes. me see if we can so this is the this is we went for just a standard overlap here because these were the blackout drapes. So the client, so if, if you could imagine that the fabric coming in like this, you're going to get that light bleed that comes right through. So that's why we had to go for the overlap on there to help um, with that light bleed. Now, if you watched our episode last week about blackout lining, you're going to know that you're still going to get light that comes through, but it helps um, diffuse the light when you're going with a standard overlap instead of a butt master. Yeah. So this is yet an, another conversation that uh, you as designers need to have with your clients and you work rooms need to have with your clients or your designer mm -hmm. and consumer your, or your designer, whoever your client is. So lots of things to talk about. So let's recap. Um, fullness mm -hmm. is probably number one. Type let's of see. Rod. Type of rod always. And butt master or overlap master mm -hmm. i think that's it right yeah. as far as the design and the consumer is concerned is how full you want it to be what kind of rod but that would be in any drapery type of application and also butt master or or overlap master yep now if you are on the ordering side if you're a workroom that provides the hardware or a designer who or orders the hardware when you order make sure that you specify that fullness when you order that that hardware and what if you're a workroom i would be very curious to know if you guys use different snap tape so kim how did tell me how did you know about different snap tape and where does it come into play for you because well, you guys don't fabricate we had um it, it comes in when we're dealing with shears when i have designers and we have that conversation of what is it going to look like at the top that's a million dollar question um we had a client that um we had a client that was doing a black shear and didn't want to do a white tape. So there's mm -hmm. actual black snap tape that's out there. So mm -hmm. when it comes to the, um, w those details, those are the kinds of things that I have had to do research over the last 14 years to really educate myself and being like, okay, this is what we need to do. We can't just do a standard white tape out there there we have to we need something that's a little bit sheer there because you know there are designers out there that those small details do matter yeah, and, of course. And, if, and those are things that i always bring up when if it's if we're not dealing with just a solid um drape if it's a sheer situation so that's even why we had to order um find the black tape mm -hmm. so that that way we could um we could figure that you know and so the the distance between the tape that i have somebody just asked is four and a quarter so that's what i've always said this is the tape that we always buy so the other tape do you happen to know what that distance is uh that i don't know i mean i think okay, that, so i think it's i haven't purchased one that had a different spacing it's been usually the standardized spacing it's right. just whether it's been i know that it comes in different spacing but um it's just always been either the the sheer tape that we've had to use or the black and i think it even comes in brown now mm, we've only sure. used it in white and sheer we've never used it in black but no. it's good to know because we have had dark drapes and we're like white is the only thing it's like you can have it in any color as long as it's white yeah and then and then also the way if you're if you are working with the sheer and you don't want to see the white at the top coming through what we've done in the past as well where black obviously wasn't appropriate and if it was like something gray we've also have done created a band at the top like a small mm -hmm. out of a solid fabric so that's another way yeah. to kind of get around that as well yeah yeah we have done that as well so we don't have the answer to your question about that alternative spacing but i would love to research it and you know what we'll do is um we can drop it in the do? comments. We can drop it in the comments on Facebook, and uh, I believe there is a way to drop in comments. Well, yeah, it's going to be on my feed on Instagram, mm -hmm. so I will drop a comment there of what that alternative spacing is. So, how does that sound? Yes. <laughs> All right, I think we have talked about ripple fold. 
um, probably not enough. It's never yeah. enough. Sure there's always questions, but at least we gave you some. Here's another project we did for Hang Design. You welcome custom coverings. <laughs> What's your name? Yes. Um, what is your name? What is your name? And let us know how you like this episode and uh, if it at least sheds some light on what how ripple fold drapes are made, what they're all about, and what kind of the anatomy of them is. Okay. And um, before we let you go, just a couple of announcements. And what, Linda? Hi, Linda. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Linda. <laughs> Linda, are you going to the Window Coverings Expo in Florida? If so, we would, you know, let's. I would love to just meet up with with all the different with people with people down there in Florida. So that's we'll we'll talk about that later. But yeah. Um, so if you are new to the window treatment market. Uh, Luann has written a uh, ebook, 10 Things You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatment. So head on over to the window. Oh, yes, you're going. Okay, we're going to have to maybe awesome. figure out. Maybe we'll figure out a yeah, meetup. Come find us. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, uh, so head on over to the Window Works website and download your free copy today. Hmm. And from Vitalia Inc., we also have a free gift for you. It is curated lookbook filled with inspiration and education. We call it 37 and a half window treatment ideas for you designers and window treatment pros to steal, swipe, and use immediately on your next project. And you can grab yours at vitaliainc.com. Okay. And to keep up with all things Miss Luann, head on over to luannigara.com where you could also listen to the audio version of Window Treatment Friday, where this whole thing started from was the episodes that Vita and Luann discuss um, the business side of window treatments. Here we show the pretty side of window treatments. Um, so yes. <laughs> Thanks, Luann. <laughs> Luann, see Luann's meetup at either the Exciting Windows booth and the WCAA booth. Yes, we will be at both of those booths. And if you are local here to us in New Jersey, we are starting our Lunch and Learns. They are back. Yay. They're <laughs> back. We've missed them. It's been two years. So exactly. our, our first Lunch and Learn, yeah, I think our last hurrah we had here was the showroom reveal party in December. In December. Oh my God. That That's was our crazy. last hurrah that we had. So our, um, our first lunch and learn of uh, 2022, yes, that's the year, sorry, it's all kind of been a blur the last two years, is going to be March 7th here at Window Windowworks. Um, it is from 1230 to three o'clock. We are doing a lunch and learn with the WCAA and IDS. So if you are local to the area, please sign up. It is a free event that we have here. We're going to have food from Nona's, which is really great. And you're going to get a lot of um, great information. So we would love to see you here in our home. <laughs> the week from Monday. What is the topic, Kim? Um, the topic. What is the topic, Luann? Oh, professional <laughs> sustainability. Sorry, I had a brain fart there for a moment. Professional sustainability. So um, yeah, it's definitely a good one. You don't want to miss it. Whether it doesn't doesn't matter if you are in the window treatment industry or an interior designer, um, both are welcome to come uh, to learn about. Um, and professional sustainability as in like a, a best business practices to make sure your business continues to be profitable and sustainable. Is Luann, that, is that Luann, okay. if you could drop those comments. Okay. Yes. And actually, while Luann's hopefully dropping those comments, I want to introduce us on at least this platform to another podcast that Miss Luann is launching. It will be called the um, Window Treatments for Profit. So, and we of course know that Luann is all about a profitable business, a sustainable business, a productive, efficient business. So we know that a well-designed business podcast has been around for Six, six years, years. Six years. Six. Yep, always going to six or seven. You know what it is? It's like six years, but she's on seven hundred plus episodes. So yeah. I have to like figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and the, in the in the beginning, brain. she used to do three episodes a week. Right, right. Like, that, that, wow. That's that's why they they don't align with the number of days. <laughs> okay, so what Luann is saying, the topic for the lunch and learn is it's all the things surviving the tsunami of business. Business, yes. perfect. Yes. Okay, we all need that. Yeah. Okay, so so Miss Luann, at the end of March, so in just a few weeks 
weeks, she's launching another podcast specifically for window treatment pros. So while the well-designed business podcast has been primarily for interior designers and how to run a well designed and well run and mm -hmm. well sustained interior design business, mm -hmm. there really has been sort of a void in a way of how to do the same thing, but specifically for the uh, window treatment mm -hmm. pros. And yes, our businesses are similar. And yes, we're in the same industry. And yes, there are so many overlaps, but there's still a lot of separate things and very specific and nuanced things that are directed and targeted specifically for the window treatment pro. And I am so honored and excited and privileged and just all those things to be a guest host of solo episodes on this podcast. Yay! So we are calling that Vita's Tip in 10. Mm -hmm. And so every week I will be coming to your podcast inbox. To our ears. <laughs> to, to, to our ears. ears. AirPods and our earbuds. For, for as close to 10 minutes as I can time it with <laughs> just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a challenge. I'm like, exactly how many words does it have to be to do 10 minutes? Because, you know, when you say Vita's tip in 10, I don't want to go for 12 minutes or 15, certainly. I want it to be exact. Yeah. I'm sure Luann's like rolling her eyes and she's like, lady, you can do longer or shorter. <laughs> So anyway, the point is that I will be coming to you every week with a quick and actionable tip that you can think about, implement immediately, or j just really wrap your mind around and uh, um, think about your business in a different way. I think of it as sort of a, a, a Z pack, if you will, a, or a quick shot of espresso that we all need in the morning. And uh, you listen to me for 10 minutes, you get what you need and you're out the door uh, doing conquering your day. So I'm super excited about um, helping Luann and being of value to her and to her audiences about that on that. So Alrighty, everyone. Well, that is today's episode on Ripple Full Drapes. We hope. Oh my God, I totally was. Just... <laughs> I knew. I know you. I know you. She's like, lady. I could hear her right now. Lady, no one's counting it or timing it. Right. <laughs> um, we hope that um, you learned a couple things on Ripple Folds. Um, again, if you are going to be in the area March 7th, uh, come visit us at Window Works. For the lunch and learn sign up at our eventbrite in april if you are going to be at the window covering expo um come find us at the exciting windows and the wcaa booths so we'd love to to meet all of you in person it's been yes, too long it's been too long <laughs> exactly and listen you guys if you're an interior designer in the philadelphia area so that would be south jersey uh, delaware philadelphia area pennsylvania bucks montgomery counties um we would love to support you on your with your window treatment needs and you know as i say that it also comes to mind that we have been very lucky and honored and privileged to work on some amazing projects all over the country so if you do have that kind of special project where you need incredible support somebody who really has your back somebody who really knows what they're doing and your project is in california or hawaii or paris we will happily there as well and support you with your window treatment needs so dm me pm me call me email me um let's see how we can work together okay so so this concludes can you hear me yeah we can hear okay. all right so this concludes our episode number 86 ripple fall drapes join us here every friday at 9 a.m usually barring any kind of traffic emergencies what did she say? Oh, hello, so selfless, lol. <laughs> you, you mean Hawaii? I mean, yeah. I, I mean come on. <laughs> it is, you know, it's such a bear. I, and <laughs> I, I like think Vita's going to need help too measuring, so I'll go. Perfect. Especially if it's Paris. I'll, I'll hold that other side of the tape measure. <laughs> Listen, holding the other side of the tape measure is a real thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> even with all the grips that they've come up with, even with the uh, electric, uh, uh, what do you call it, el electronic things, it's still a thing. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. This was episode number 86. We are quickly approaching our 100th episode, which is going to be super cool. 
We would love to see you here every Friday. We would love to see you at IWCE. We would love to see you at Windowworks in just a couple of weeks. So come join us in person or come join us here virtually where Kim and I geek out every Friday on all things window treatments. So until then, have a great weekend. Bye-bye, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Lou. Thanks for joining us. Greetings from your latest followers in Toronto. Yay! Nice having you here, guys. Awesome. Join us here every Friday, please. Oh, Mimi, you're here. Look, all of our friends are here. This is so exciting. <laughs> That's okay. I see that you're frozen and then you just... <laughs> That's all right. We love technology. If these episodes haven't taught us anything else, if we if we, if we learn or know nothing about window treatments, we have certainly learned how to deal with unpredictable, ever changing, and never cooperative technology. So Kim and I, we're just like, what ifs? We just let it roll off our shoulder and go on with the show. <laughs> all right, this show must end for today. <laughs> Bye-bye.